Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, you're first gonna hit that like button and then maybe that subscribe button and I will show you a cute, adorable photo of one of my animals. Insert here, see, ah, cute, there you go, there's your reward. Absolutely free and it supports this channel. Anyways, so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about inoculants and specifically inoculants for legumes because that's really the only inoculant. Well, that's not true, but it is an important inoculant to use with your legumes. Now, if you have not heard about this, you need to run to the store right now and go grab some. I will leave an Amazon affiliate link down below if you want to grab some for yourself, but this is a life changing product. I can promise you this. To put this into perspective, me and my mother-in-law were actually talking about inoculant for legumes here not too long ago. And she said one year she used, used inoculant and she planted her normal amount of peas that she always normally plants. And she said, typically I would get like a bag full, like a, a garbage bag full of peas, which she would then freeze or can or whatever. She used inoculant one year and she said that she filled up the back of a half ton truck using her normal volume of pea seedlings. And then on top of that, she had to hire a farmer with a pea sheller to help her shell all these things. That is what rhizobium bacteria does. So if we're talking about a must have soil addition or seed addition, this would be it. So essentially all this is, is it is the nodules. It is the, it's an intensification of the nodules that are found on your legume roots. This is peas, beans, alfalfa, anything in the legume family, chickpeas, lentils, you name it, this will benefit you. So all it is, is it is the rhizobium bacteria directly applied to that seed. And then that seed, um, goes into the ground into the soil and the rhizobium bacteria will sit in the soil and harbor and eventually when the roots come out it will form a symbiotic relationship with the root which is what forms these nodule looking things and i actually used to work in this industry doing research and development for a product called tag team i believe is i don't remember what the names are now anymore but it used to be called novozymes and now i think it's called biotech or something like that anyways it was for chickpeas lentils that sort of thing and all that this stuff does is you apply it to the seed it, it sits in the soil and then it will form nodules now Rhizobium bacteria naturally occurs in the soil and it is native to soil. However, it generally is the wrong strain or it's not the get to work strain. So it's not as intense of a strain as what you can get from the marketed versions. And generally through crop rotation, freeze, thaw cycles, all that fun stuff, the rhizobium will decrease in volume and just overall life in the soil system. So that is why we actually add it to, to the system every single year. The studies that have been done on this shows that if you have nodulation on your legumes, that 80% of all your nitrogen needs for that plant will be fixed from the atmosphere. So what it does is it takes N2, which is 78% or something ridiculous of our atmospheric air. So when you breathe, you're breathing in mostly, mostly nitrogen. What this bacteria does through its nodulation formation on the plant is it takes that from the air and plugs it into that nodule, which then feeds the plant, but also feeds the bacterium inside that nodule. When the plant dies off and we leave that root mass in the ground, it's going to decompose and then that decomposition will eventually release nitrogen back in the soil in a usable form that the crop the next year can benefit from. As well as if you intercrop with legumes while also inoculating with rhizobium bacteria, you will be feeding your tomatoes, for example, with nitrogen. If you choose to use rhizobium bacteria on your legumes, because it will result in high yields, you actually don't need to fertilize and it's re recommended that you heavily reduce your fertilization because if the fertilizer is present, it is easier for the plant to grab the nitrogen from the soil. It's easier for the bacteria to eat the nitrogen that's in the soil 
Remember the mulching video we talked about where we talked about how bacteria actually needs nitrogen to help with the decom decomposition cycle and just its general life cycle. So if nitrogen is present in the soil, both the nitrogen or both the microbes are gonna be selfish and just eat it out of the soil, as well as the roots are gonna be selfish and they're just gonna eat it out of the soil as well. However, if we don't have nitrogen in the soil and we add this bacteria, it will force the bacteria to form a symbiotic relationship with the legume and therefore form these beautiful nodules, which will then benefit you in the years to come. The application for this is very simple, you guys. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to do it on a cold, cloudy day. It is photosensitive, so if you can do it in the morning time, that is better. But regardless if, if you get a liquid or a granular, you will want to liquefy it. So even the granular or the powdered stuff, I will mix it in with water and then I will mix the seeds inside of that water and I will just give it a nice little sloosh. Then you will plant your seeds and you can actually just dump the rest of it out into the soil. If you have already planted your seedlings um, or your seeds, you can just like dig a little trench beside where they were planted and then put in inoculant in beside it. It's kind of up to you. You just have to make sure it's in the soil and it's within the root zone so it can be absorbed. You don't want to put it on the surface of the soil because again, it is photosensitive. Um, we used to sit in the back of trucks. We would have this stuff in coolers because it doesn't like to get hot either. So we'd have it in a cooler, we'd pull it out of the cooler, mix it in cold water, put these seeds inside of these little Ziploc baggies and then like massage the seeds to get it all over the seeds. And then we would quickly plant them and put the soil over top of it and be done. That is literally it. It has benefits for both future crops and your current crops, current yields. You don't want to fertilize if you use it. It will, honest to goodness, revolutionize your legume harvest. It actually is really good for the soil because you're introducing a diverse world of bacteria, which is always a good thing. Um, it's going to feed that soil food web. And yeah, it's just wonderful stuff, so. Oh, a really quick video. I'm so sorry, it is so fast, but I thought I gotta get this in before you guys go crazy, plant all these legumes and then i completely forget to mention it for the second year in a row because last year i was going to mention it completely forgot and now we're here at year two and i'm like oh shoot i forgot about the rhizobium bacteria so rhizobium bacteria on your legumes revolutionize both current yields and your after crops really elevate your soil food web really elevate your microbial activity your density your diversity in the soil use it for intercropping or not up to you let me know in the comments down below if you've used rhizobium bacteria and what results you noticed if you noticed your yields skyrocket in the same sense that my mother-in-law has used it i've studied it and we did um both root tests like biomass tests on the root to see how much biomass there was there biomass tests on the actual uh, upper foliage and then the seed yields and it makes a very notable difference it's some good stuff their Mackenzie Seeds makes it in Canada. Um, it's a big packet too. Honestly, unless you're doing a ton of peas or legumes, you wouldn't use it all. So you could split it with a friend, but it's also very affordable. Um, if you use it and you want to save it for next year, put it in the freezer. Don't just leave it out on the counter. And yeah, it's a super simple product, super simple concept as to how it works. And I honestly highly recommend it. You will, and you guys know I don't, recommends i think most stuff is voodoo but this is not voodoo this is real so um give it a shot and let me know if you notice any crazy results i'd be excited to know if you do or not you can if you're doing it in a potting soil medium you definitely want to do it because you're not using it in a soil medium so i can guarantee you that peat moss for example um will not have this stuff and it is not fungi it is bacteria and it is wicked shit I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!